Electronic impulses, possibly destroyed tissue. Continue impulse and auditory suggestion at intervals of seven minutes until end of week. If no response by Friday, termination. Helen is the newest member of our custodial engineering team, so if you two coaches have any suggestions, we'd be most grateful. We want everything to be perfect. Don't be Helen. I do the best I can. Exactly. The doctor is one of the most remarkable. Remarkable. She looked remarkable. <laughs> Dr. Focus is the guiding heart here at the American Biological Association Development for the Advancement of Brain Analysis. <laughs> we call it Abadabo for short. <laughs> this will be your locker and your key. Mrs. Bridge has been with Abadabo only three months and already she's a much endeared member of our little family. Your equipment will go in that closet. I have to bring my own hangers, I suppose. <laughs> Although it was somewhat embarrassing to me, it was Mrs. Fridge's inventorial excellence that uncovered what Margarita, your predecessor, did and why she had to leave us. She'd been drinking portions of the ethyl alcohol. There's a basin under the sink for reverency. The undenatured ethyl alcohol, and she almost burned out her esophagus. I wouldn't have minded so much if she had only asked. <laughs> Didn't you find personnel pleasant? Well, they asked a lot of crazy questions. For instance, they wanted to know how I felt watching TV. Well, what do you mean, how you felt? They wanted to know what went on in my head while I watched television in my living room and the audience laughed. They asked if I ever thought the audience was laughing at me. <gasps> my, oh my. What did you tell them? I don't have a TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not. Yes. Now, it's really quite simple. That is our special soap solution. One tablespoon to a gallon of hot water for ordinary cleaning, if I may suggest. I so much prefer to act as an assist to the custodial engineering staff. New ideas, techniques, I try to keep myself open. She left a dirty mop. I beg your pardon. The one that drank. <laughs> she left a dirty mop. How ugly. I'll report it first thing in the morning. It may seem like a small point, but if she ever tries to use us as a reference, she may be amazed at the specificity of our files. <laughs> it's not that dirty. I'll start you in the laboratory area. We like it done first. The specimen section is next. And by that time, we'll be well toward morning. And if there are a few extra minutes, you can polish the brass strip. Margarita never once got to the brass strip. Ready? Fine. You were with one concern for 10 years, weren't you, dear? 10 years with the Metal Climax building. That's next to Radio City Music Hall, isn't it, dear? Uh-huh. Oh, they sent a marvelous letter of recommendation, how you wash the corridor on the 17th floor. And the Metal Climax building is a very long building. My, you must be very proud. Ten years on the 17th floor. <laughs> Why did you leave? They put in a rug. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle, Helen will be taking Margarita's place. Danielle is the ninth order for the fifth through ninth floors. Duties you might find is tasteful. Hiya. Hello. By the way, Daniel, 
there's a cross on nine you missed, and the technicians on that floor have complained about the odor. You can be certain we will assist in every way possible. Well, maybe you can get me some hangers. I'd be glad to do anything. You just say the word and I'll be it's right in here. What? Oh, that is a dolphin, dear. But you don't have to worry about anything except the floors. Dr. Crocus prefers us not to touch either the equipment or the animals. That was another shortcoming of Margarita's. Recently, the doctor was experimenting on a colony of mice in that cage, and she was incessantly feeding them popcorn. <laughs> I'm a nice lady, though. <laughs> she lived in the East Village. Yes, she did live in the East Village. <laughs> Do you keep them crammed up in that all the time? We have a natatorium for its exercise, and at Dr. Crocus's discretion. Oh, he really looks cramped. Well, you must be anxious to begin. I'll make myself available at the reception desk in the hall for a few nights, just in case any questions arise. However, my hunch is that before you know it, I'll be coming to you with questions. Coffee break at 2 and 6 a.m., lunch at 4 a.m. All clear? Oh, I don't need a coffee break. I beg your pardon. I said I don't need a coffee break. Helen, we all need perk you ups. All of us. Perhaps you never liked them at the Metro Climax building, but you'll learn to love them here. Perk you ups make the employees much more efficient. Besides, Helen. I don't want one. They're compulsory. <laughs> oh, Helen, I know you're going to fit right in with our little family. You're such a nice person. Margarita wasn't half as bad as what Ms. Moray thought she was. Oh, I'm sure she wasn't. She was twice as bad. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you live in the city? Yes. That's nice. My husband died two years ago. That's too bad. Yeah. Two years in June, he blew up. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> when you want that water change, you just let me know. I'll take care of it. Thanks, but I just like to get the temperature right so my hands don't get boiled. You must miss your husband. Biggest mistake I ever made getting married. You married? No. Good. If a woman ain't suited for it, she shouldn't do it. I didn't say I wasn't suited for it. Mm -hmm. My husband was set in his ways, too. Son of a bitch. <laughs> You'll excuse me, I have to get my work done. I guess I'd better see about that croc on nine. You don't like to talk, do you? It's just I used to working alone, and that's the way I get my work done. What do you mean your husband blew up? <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Helen? The, the fish is making some kind of funny noise. Mammal. It's a mammal, Helen. The mammal is making some kind of funny noise. Mammals are supposed to make funny noises. Yes, Miss Moray.
talk. Talk? <laughs> For this one, don't. They have more laughs here that, that used to laugh. They go, <laughs> you you Polly want a cracker? <laughs> Polly 
Father, you want to do crab day? Yeah, it's four o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it's four o'clock. <laughs> Polly, you want to crack her at four o'clock? suspect they were rapacious carnivori. What do they want with it? Well, they may have an intelligence equal to our own, and if we could teach them our language or learn theirs, we might be able to. I, I can't understand you. Communicate! Wouldn't it be wonderful? Oh, yeah. When? Margarita found out they were using this on the mice. She almost fainted. No end of trouble. They chopped the heads off 300 mice? You wanted progress, remember? It's horrible. Helen, over a thousand individual laboratories did the same study last year. A thousand labs chopping off 300 mice heads. 300... 300,000 mice heads chopped off? That's a lot of mouse heads. Oh, couldn't one lab cut off a couple and then spread the word? <laughs> Helen, this is exactly what I need. You will do best not to become fond of the subject animals. When you're here a little longer, you'll learn. Well, there are some things in this world that we have to accept on faith. Whisper to me. Hi, Helen. Hello. Oh, Miss Gray said she's cut all the horns for a funky up tonight. That what, they never said anything to anybody? What thing? The mammal fish. Uh, uh, <laughs> nope. Not one word? Nope. Nothing that sounds like you. What? You. Or. I got here an hour too early, so I sat down by the docks. You can see the, the moon and the river. Thank <laughs> you. 
How are you? That reminds me, I gotta set up some formaldehyde jars by Friday. You wouldn't bite Helen, would you? Helen's gotta get that ham out of there. I, I wouldn't hurt you, you know that. <coughs> Helen knows you talk. You do talk to Helen, don't you? Hear. Hear me. Hear. <laughs> what a good boy. Such a goody, goody boy. Hear me. What a pretty boy. He's such a pretty boy. What are you doing, Helen? <laughs> oh, oh. Never mind. Just go on with your work. You know, Helen, you're such a sympathetic person. You have pets, I imagine. Cats, lots of cats. They don't allow them in my building. Plants, then. I'm sure you have hundreds of lovely green things crawling up the windows. Well, if I had green things crawling up my windows, I'd move out. <laughs> no plants either. Uh, two gloxinias. Gloxinias? Oh, such trumpets, such trumpets. They never bloom. My apartment is too cold. Oh, that is a shame. You live alone, don't you, Helen? Uh, yes, I live alone. But you have friends, I imagine. Um, other custodial colleagues, perhaps. Clubs you belong to. Mm -hmm. Social clubs, activities. I'm used to being alone. Nothing? I took a ceramics course once. Isn't that nice, a ceramic course? Oh, Helen, you are such a nice person. So nice. It does seem unjust that so much more than that is required. <laughs> you must feel overwhelmed by this environment here. Of oscilloscopes and sonar and salinity meters. To have so many personal delicacies and then be forced to behold the complexities of an electronic and chemical world must be devastating. Nevertheless, Helen. I figure I'll get the formaldehyde set up tonight, so all I'll have to worry about is that dissection stuff tomorrow. Very good, Daniel. I'm gonna need a 20 liter one for the lungs. There ain't any on this floor. What's the formaldehyde for? Helen, that's what I have been trying to tell you, to make it easier on you. The experiment series on the dolphin will terminate on Friday. Dr. Cook has left the orders with us tonight, and that's why it has concerned me that you've apparently grown fond of the mammal. Are you gonna kill it? Gonna sharpen the hands on it. <laughs> they were having trouble getting through the skull on this one. No, sir. For what? Everything didn't be perfect. Because it didn't say anything? Is that what they're killing it for? Of course you want it to be kind. You didn't know what harm you might have caused, what delicate rhythm you may have disturbed in the experiment. Helen, no matter how lovely our intentions, no matter how lonely we are and how much we want people and animals to like us, we have no right to endanger the genius about us. Now we've spoken about this before, and this time we're going to remember. Aren't you? Get your paraphernalia. In a minute, you're
we're going upstairs to the main specimen room. Help. Please help me. Come, come. Let me help you up to the main specimen room.
Christmas Moray. Helen, would you feel better if we talked about it? About what? Helen, you're such a nice person. I know just what you're going through. Really? I do it. I'm going to tell you something I've never told anyone else. Come. My first week at Abadaba, I fell in love with an animal myself. An alley cat. Pussy cat. That's what I call it. Pussy cat. Did they put the head off it? <laughs> I sense a touch of bitterness in your voice, Helen. <laughs> And don't think I wasn't bitter when I saw what had happened to Pussycat. I bet it didn't sit well with Pussycat either. <laughs> but after I thought about it for a while, I had to realize that I was just being selfish. Before what had happened to Pussycat happened, I was the only one benefiting from her. Whereas now, she's borrowed at least once a month. Last week, she went to an anatomy seminar at St. Vincent's Medical School. It's nice to let her out once in a while. <laughs> in life, she was unnoticed and worthless except to me. Now she belongs to the ages. I hope that's some comfort to you. Oh, it's very comforting. You up time will be here soon. Yes, Miss Moray. We have lady fingers. Oh, good. Such a strange thing to call a confectionery, isn't it? <laughs> it's almost macabre. <laughs> Miss Moray. I... Yes, Helen. I was wondering. <laughs> yes, I was wondering why they want to talk. Now, about now, Helen. I was the same way about pussy. Right up until the final moment, I kept asking, what good is vivisection? What good is vivisection? What good is vivisection? A lot of good. <laughs> Believe me. Like what? Well, like fishing, Helen. If we could communicate with dolphins, they might be willing to hurt fish for us. The fishing industry would be revolutionized. <laughs> Millions of fish being rounded into nets by our little mammal friends. Is that all? Oh, oh, heavens no. They'd be a blessing to the human race. A blessing. What kind? Oh, why oceanography. They'd be worshipped in oceanography. Checking the Gulf Stream, taking water temperatures, depth, salinity readings, to say nothing of the contributions they could make in marine biology, navigation, <gasps> linguistics. Oh, Helen, it gives me chills. It'd be good if they talk. God's own blessing. God's own blessing. And if we could make friends with them, talk to them, they might be willing to herd all those fish for us. All right, you little mammal friends. Today we want swordfish, fat, meaty ones, suitable for controlled portion sizing. Go and get them. My dear dolphin friends, my dear, dear dolphin friends, we're most curious about seismographic readings at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. But do be careful. We're unsure of the weather above that area. Our linguistics lesson today will consider the most beautiful word in the English language, love. Love is a strong, complex emotion or feeling causing one to appreciate or promote the welfare of another. Do you have a word like it in Dolphinese? A word similar to love? <laughs> it has a nice sheen. What? It has a nice sheen, the floor up here where it's dry. Thank you. This not right. You sure it'd be good for us if dolphins talked? Helen, are you still thinking about that? 
Perhaps you should go now. It's almost time. No, no, I'm almost finished. You got everything about the head, guys. Oh. I beg your pardon? The vice for the head. I can't find it. They, they, they can't saw through the skull bow without the head box. Did you check on five? They had it there, but what they did in St. Bernard, they had. I, I can't hear you. The St. Bernard. They used it for the St. Bernard. On five? That's what I said. Well, I looked on five. I didn't see the head vice. It must have been staring right in the face. You come with me. It must have been staring right in the face. We'll be right back, Helen. Book. I looked at your book. Looked at your book all right. Book. You want to know what I think? I don't think much of you. That's what I think. Book. Oh, shut up. Big, 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 big. I'm not interested. You, you, you're so silly. But to get a little fish for hungry humans is just too much for you. Tell them you can talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't like that, eh? Yeah. Well, I don't like lazy, selfish people, mammals or animals. You do anything to avoid a little work, wouldn't you? Oh. Cut it out. You're getting water all over the floor. Oh. I guess you don't like us. I guess you don't like us enough to. Military implications. Plant mines in enemy waters. Useful for anti personnel self directing the weapons. War. Oh, deliver atomic warheads. War. Nuclear torpedoes. Not to attach bombs to submarines or, or surface vessels. Terrorize enemy waters, beaches, war, war, war. And if we could talk to them, we'd get them to herd fish for us, all right. One way or another, they do exactly as they were told. All right, you dolphins. Today, we want you to herd fish. Herd all the fish you can, away from the enemy's waters. Detonate underwater poison bombs. Remove their food supply. Foul the enemy's waters. Make the waters unfit for life of any kind. <laughs> Enemy fleets are located here, and here, and here. You'll have 27 hours to attach nuclear warheads before automatic detonation. Our objective, total annihilation. Our linguistics lesson today will consider the most basic word in the English language, hate. Hate is a strong emotion, which means abhorrence, anger, animosity, detestation, hostility, malevolence, malice, malignity, odium, rancor, revenge, repugnance, and dislike. <laughs> Do you have a word like it in Dolphinese? If you don't, we'll teach you every nuance of ours, every nuance of the word. Hate. They're already thinking of ways to use you for war. Is that why you can't talk to them? What did you talk to me for? You, you don't talk to them, but you talk to me. Because you want something. There's something I can do. Something you want me to do? Ham. <laughs> what? Ham. <coughs> I thought you ate 
fish. Ham. Ham. I don't know what you're talking about. Ham. Mustard on 18. I'll have to see if she needs assistance. I'll come with you. Oh, Ellen, you can go now. It's time. I never left the dirty head by. She's trying to say that I left it like this. Do you know, I know what she's getting at. Do you know what a ham curd is? Wait till I get my hands on Kaczynski. Kaczynski's supposed to do the fit for He should be cleaning this, not me. It's all caked up. You listen a minute. Ham curve. Do you know what a ham curve is? The only ham curve I ever heard of is alcohol. Five scallops. <coughs> Large clamp, small clamp. Bone saw. Scissors. Dissection needles, two dozen. Kaczynski left the high altitude chamber dirty once, and I got blamed for that too. And that had mucus all over it. You want me to do something with the hamper? What? To, to bed it? To put, put. Oh, you want me to put you in it? Now what do I do with you? Where can I take you? See. See. See what? See. Helen, 
You really are a nice person, a very nice person. But to be simple and nice in a in a world where giant minds are 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 leaping the the micro and macrocosms, well, one would expect that you would have the humility to yield in unquestioning awe. I really am very proud of you, Helen, with your fire. Call for Sinel after nine. And I was going to bring you hangers. I want you to know that. Thank <laughs> you. 